Uh, hello. Yep. So exactly that. So that, that's the topic about the um, the talk. So first of all, you know my introduction. So my name is Ricardo Carrillo Cruz. Although you know everybody calls me Ricky. I'm a principal software engineer at Red Hat. I've been there for almost seven years now. I'm a member of the productization team at Ansible. Uh, we are responsible for building and delivering um, the Ansible products, and we're also, you know, responsible for the installers and operators and other stuff. Uh, previously to that, I was very involved into uh, the OpenStack project as a whole with another company. Then um, I joined Red Hat uh, with Ansible, and then I've shuffled around a bit. So I've been at OpenShift Engineering, CDO Office, and I'm back to the mother ship at Ansible because. Um, I'm really happy, you know, to be back with my folks. So first, a little bit of introduction because I'm not sure, you know, um, I don't like to presume things. I don't know if you ever heard Podman, if not. So what is Podman? It's a container engine to build, run, and manage containerized apps. So, you know, you can pull images from Docker Hub, Quay. Um, you can build your applications. You have a, maybe a, a web app with your source code, and you want to create an image and push it. And you can create containers, run them, stop them, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, it's obviously open source. Uh, we're Red Hat. We're in an open source um, conference. That w what we do. It uh, follows open standards like OCI for container images and runtime. So it will support things like run C, C run, you know, whatever, you know, it's standardized. You know, it's just, just like Docker, but different. So how is it different? Uh, well, it was designed to support rootless containers from the ground up. Uh, one of the things that the Podman folks did is that they, they didn't want to have like Docker that runs as a daemon and, you know, as root. So uh, the cool thing about Podman is that you can run um, a container uh, as non-root. And basically, if there was some sort of a privilege escalation um, and you could somehow, you know, get out of the container, you would still be running as the non-root user at the host. Uh, it's daemonless, unlike Docker, which has a, um, a client um, server architecture, which you know you connect from a client to the server, and the server you know spins up the container, and then you know it wires up the connection between them for the standard uh, in and standard that out. It doesn't have any kind of daemon. It's just a fork and exec. So Podman spins up, uh, spawns the container runtime. The container runtime spawns the key container. And that's it. So Podman, you know, uh, uh, you know goes away. Uh, Docker still uh, like compatible, um, you know, tries to, it aims to add the same flags as Docker, uh, you know, for the most part, you know, uh, you can even, you know, do like a, an alias for, for Docker and Podman will just uh, work. Uh, cool things that it has. So despite being demonless, you're going to still have like a Podman um, as a daemon if you want to access it. Um, you know, remotely, maybe because uh, you want to have, you know, a machine, a host machine with Podman running and you don't want to run Podman from your laptop, you can still do that. That's managed by systemd. It's not Podman being a daemon. It's systemd doing that. Uh, integration with systemd, that's another thing that the Podman folks wanted to put into uh, the project. Uh, maybe you have some, um, you know, legacy application which you have multiple services. And you want to have like system be managing all, all of that. And I, uh, my understanding is, is that there was some issue uh, with Docker and they, they didn't want to allow that. And, you know, Podman allows you to do that. You can have a Podman container, which, you know, can leave, you know, system D um, managing uh, the services for you. Um, this is actually another cool one that uh, you can actually label your containers with a special label. And if you run a Podman auto update command, Podman will go to either an internal or remote registry, check whether there's a new image for your container. And if there is, then it will pull it and rerun it so it updates the container. Uh, you can also have like a systemd unit uh, managing that um, if, you don't, if you want to have more automatic kind of things. Uh, it supports pods of containers. This is like, you know, uh, 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 just in case. Uh, you're not familiar in Kubernetes. You have like the the single ex, um, unit for execution is a pod. It's not that container itself. So when you want to have like containers that share the life cycle and they want you want them to share like the same uh, uh, storage and networking, you put them into a pod. So that's um, actually what gives 
I think Podman the name, it's Pod Manager because it allows you to create pods. So you can create a pod and then you, you put containers in them. So you can share um, networking or storage to have uh, some communication um, between them. Uh, generation of Podman pods from Kubernetes manifest. You can, you can actually get something like a deployment uh, manifest um, from Kubernetes and uh, run a command and then you create containers out of it. And the other way around. You can generate Kubernetes manifest from Podman objects, uh, which is actually uh, you know, pretty cool. Uh, now, another quick introduction uh, for Ansible. Ansible is an IT automation tool. It's, um, it's, it's a tool that allows you to automate things for your infrastructure, whether you know, it's uh, deploying servers, uh, you know, um, configuring your servers, deploying applications, that kind of thing. It's open source with Red Hat, uh, uh, that's what we do. Very easy to learn and use. Uh, this is actually one of the cool things about Ansible is that it's a, a, the, the learning curve is like, you know, very low. It's like uh, very easy to get going and, you know, automate things with it. Agentless, uh, some other, you know, similar tools, uh, you have to install agents in your service to actually run automation. With Ansible, it's not like that. You have something, you run Ansible from a bastion or control machine as we call it and you run automation against your target host. So you don't have to install anything. Uh, providing you can SSH to it or use whatever you know, connection plugin to connect to the device, you can just do it. Uh, highly extensible with plugins. Everything you know, with Ansible, it's uh, plugin based. You know, from the, the connections, you can maybe, you know, you want to, you have devices that do not use SSH, so for example, Windows machines, so you have a, a connection plugin for WinRM. For example, or maybe you know you want to um, you you have your host machine in Inventory, which is a static file, but you want to somehow pull your VMs from AWS. So you have plugins for Inventory. So pretty much everything in in Ansible is plugin based. You can um, mix and match, and you can extend it. Uh, use case for uh, Ansible config management: you know, uh, install packages, uh, set firewalls. Uh, you know, uh, create users, groups, that kind of thing. Infrastructure provisioning, you can create, you know, uh, VMs, containers, clusters, uh, you know, AWS, GCP, Azure, DigitalOcean, OpenStack, VMware, I mean, you name, it, you name it. We have, you know, a lot of modules for that kind of thing. Application deployment, if you need to deploy, um, uh, you know, your bare metal servers applications or containerized applications or even, you know, um, V, um, uh, you can even create VMs for, with your applications, then push them into your cloud, and then you create instances from it. Orchestration, that's my favorite one, because Ansible is so simple, and it has such a wide integration with different services. It can actually act as, a, as the glue to basically um, automate all the things. Uh, yeah, Ari Cloud, you know, all the clouds that I said, networking, you can automate your networking devices, uh, your firewalls, um, we're also getting into, into the edge right now. So uh, with Ansible, you put your uh, content modules and playbooks and roles and all that into collections, uh, which, you know, contain particular domain of automation. So you will have a collection for AWS or for VMware, that kind of thing. And you can pull that from Ansible Galaxy, which is a repository in the internet for basically browse and, and look for your content to automate your stuff. Um, so this is the collection that, we, um, that there is for um, Podman. Um, that's uh, been largely developed by another fellow Reddit hatter, Sagi Schneidman. He's done a phenomenal job, uh, you know, creating a very feature-rich uh, collection for automated, you know, Podman containers. Um, because it's not part of the Ansible core, uh, it's available from Ansible Galaxy, so you have to like install it with Ansible Galaxy CLI. Um, it has, um, it's a resource-based kind of collection, so we'll have resources for managing Podman containers, which you can stop, start containers, you can even, you know, generate system D units for those containers that you want to run. Uh, um, Modules for building, pulling images, logging to registries, whether you know they're internal, um, you know, um, or public ones. Create network uh, networks in Podman. Uh, you can also you also have like a module for um, integration with Kubernetes, uh, also for managing pods and volumes. And you know the the use cases. 
You can build and publish container images, push them into Docker or Quay, whatever. You can deploy your container as applications managed by systemd. Uh, you can actually, uh, okay, so you run a, a Podman container, but also have a, a systemd generated, so you can start and stop it with systemd, which is a really nice feature. Um, because uh, you can do pretty much anything with Ansible. Uh, that's another good use case. You can uh, create an instance, then configure the instance with a, with a role that will deploy a container as application on it, then you uh, create an AMI from it, and um, then you have like a blueprint, an AMI which contains your container as app, and you can create uh, instances of it. Uh, yeah, so you can manage your volumes and networks for doing backup and restore for your containerized applications because you can actually not, not only uh, create volumes, uh, you can also uh, infer and get information about your current Podman objects. Uh, you have info modules for all of that. And if you have like Podman, um, Podman containers running, you can also generate systemd units for it with it. And also, um, you know, um, Following that feature for, for Podman, you can it will it can also help you out to migrate uh, workloads from Kubernetes to Podman and the other way around. I'm not sure, uh, so this is going to be a hard one because, um, yeah, I don't have my yeah. So yeah, so this is one word. So I won't be able to do the demo because I don't have in front of me the terminal. So I'm, I'm sorry, but if you go to the last slide, it will contain the link and some, yeah, I can, I can even click here, yikes. Yeah, so if you go to this uh, link, you will find some playbooks and scripts that will have a very basic role that, um, builds an image uh, by using a role for uh, based off an, an nginx image it will create a volume push some html files on it and then um, it will create that image um, with the aws modules and then tear it down so basically it will depict how you can have a very basic role for creating your container as application and reuse it for creating a cloud image which you can use for uh, launch your instances um, with it. And we're out of time.